Howdy folks, and welcome back to You Got This. I'm Garrett, and today we're going to talk about feet. Uh, but before I get too carried away, I wanna say, if I'm wearing the same shirt in the next few episodes, it's not because I always wear the same shirt. I'm gonna shoot a handful of episodes today and uh, kind of release them out over the next month. Um, so with that said, let's dive into feet. Um, what are the, there's so many layers to feet um, and you're gonna ask your process about it and you don't need to know everything about the feet, but you wanna know the questions to ask and kind of how to prioritize things. And ideally, um, most really good prosthetists will help you uh, select feet by ordering several. And so you can try several out um, when you first go and then you choose one and usually you've got a good 30, 60, 90 days to try out the foot. And if you really hate it, you can always send it back and get a different one. So you're never really totally locked in until you've committed and you're kind of past that point. Um, and most feet come with about a three year warranty, uh, sometimes two, and insurance usually starts to consider, that's not necessarily they will, but you can get new feet after three years, but at least three years, um, or if the foot breaks, uh, but usually that's covered under warranty and that kind of thing. So. Um, that said, we'll start with feet, um, and I have a new one now, uh, just got this earlier this week, uh, and I have been loving it, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, the first thing is really foot shells. That's the outside. Um, it's kind of the simplest part. You gotta have a foot shell to fill out a shoe. Um, if you don't, then the foot is too small, it slides around. And foot shells are tricky. Uh, on the bottom of all of them, uh, they have a size. Uh, this one's a 29. Um, my new ones are 28s. The 29s were too big. And uh, in my case, I actually had to shave them down um, so they could fit in the shoes. Uh, and this one's cracked and old and beat up um, from that. Uh, because you want them to match your foot uh, so they can fit well in your shoes, which we'll talk more about that in the very next episode. Um, some feet, like a running blade, uh, don't need a shoe. They have a sole built in, um, and so you would just have one shoe. And one of the really cool things uh, that Nike does is they have a one shoe program where you can call in and um, ask them for a shoe in your size, uh, and then give them a few color preferences, and they will mail you a free shoe um, to go on your off foot. So if you don't wear a shoe on your prosthetic leg or you can't wear your prosthetic yet, you can get um, one free shoe from Nike. You don't get to pick it out, they pick it out, but it helps. Um, so these legs are impractical for day-to-day -day stuff um, because there's no heel, you can't stand on it. It'll just roll backwards. And so you really have to stand up on your toe to compensate. They're great for running, uh, but not so great for walking. Plus, because they absorb so much energy, they're actually designed to be about an inch longer. So if you ever see um, somebody who's not bilateral, meaning only one leg is um, amputated, their running leg will be a little bit longer and they can't stand even. You kind of have to stand you know, with your knee bent and your foot out in front of you or whatever uh, to balance because this one will be a little bit longer. But it's a really soft, comfortable ride um, for running, which really helps. Um, this is a K4 foot. Um, insurance won't cover these. And the next foot is also a K4 foot. Um, and insurance won't cover it because it's so specialized. This is the foot I use for um, snowboarding and mountain biking. And uh, it's got a mountain bike shock built into it so that your ankle can flex. Um, before I get too deep into that, though, I want to step back real quick and talk about the K4 aspect. Um, most feet are rated um, feet amputees on uh, activity level, and it's called the K level. And you have K0, K1, K2, K3, and K4. Uh, basically at K0, um, chances are you're probably not gonna make the most of a prosthetic if you have one, uh, maybe wheelchair bound, very minimal use. Um, and then the spectrum goes all the way up to K4 where you're basically gonna do anything that um, somebody with both of their limbs uh, would do. And so K4 legs are usually aggressive, very specialized, and not practical for anything other than the thing you got them for. And so that can be challenging, and that's why insurance won't cover them. 
but you can get grants. There's a lot of great programs out there like Amputee Blade Runners and Challenged Athletes Foundation. And they have uh, sometimes rolling application processes or annual cycles and you apply for a grant and they factor in needs. So it's needs based, but it's also you know equipment based and it depends on how much funding they have available for the year. Uh, that's how I got my running foot. Uh, and that's how uh, it made a huge difference. I don't think I probably would have been able to pull off justifying a running foot otherwise, uh, but it's great. This, um, because it's for snowboarding and that kind of thing, motorcycling, horseback riding, uh, mountain biking, all of that, where the ankle flexion makes a big difference, um, was also K4, but this one I paid for out of pocket. And again, um, I think if I didn't live in a ski town, I probably wouldn't have gone all out and invested in this. Um, but living in a ski town, I'm on the snow a lot. I'm on the mountain bike a lot. Um, this foot is probably one of the more common feet that I wear on a regular basis. Um, it also, so another thing, and we'll talk about this with the shoe episode. This is a sole that can fit in a shoe, which is great um, for versatility, but you can also with this foot get different plates. Um, so this was a plate, is a plate, uh, for clipping in on a mountain bike. And that's helpful, but as an amputee, uh, without your ankle, it's really difficult to unclip. So you kind of have to use your hip as your ankle and that can make it more difficult. Um, so that's not always ideal. I've found that I just really prefer this and uh, regular shoes. And again, we'll get way into those shoes in the next episode. Um, this is my very first, first foot. It's a soleus. And uh, it's pretty standard, uh, but fairly aggressive. You can see how tall it is. Um, a lot of feet are shorter, uh, but the taller the foot is, the more they can put um, functional stuff in here to kind of give you good leverage and make the foot more dynamic so that uh, you, know, you can do more dynamic things and uh, not have that impact shoot up your leg. Um, in my case, I'm right on the cusp weight-wise of where this foot falls. So this is actually my third one of these because the first two I broke, um, they were, since I was on the cusp, we went with the lower softer one, um, which was nice because it flexed more when I rolled over on my toe to walk, but the carbon fiber, because of the weight rating, it ended up uh, breaking away here and they sent me um, the next one up, which is the same foot size, but it's a lot stiffer. It's a lot harder to walk in. Um, and this is basically turned into my, I know I can't destroy a leg um, that I can wear to the beach um, and that kind of thing. And that's a whole other topic. And we'll talk about going to the beach uh, or the pool and kind of how to make that work in a future episode. This is the All Pro. Um, up until my new foot, this was generally my everyday foot. Um, and you can see because of this huge curve, this is a 12 inch foot. Um, my prosthetist said I'm the only person he's ever fit for the 12 inch version, um, just because I'm tall and I have a really short limb. But the tall version gives you a lot. This is the softest foot I have because when I roll over on my toe, this whole thing flexes and bends just the right amount. Um, but as you can see, it's a lot like the running blade. Uh, this has a heel on it, so it won't fall backwards like the running foot will. But, it does not work well with pants. Um, what happens is the pants come down and then they get pushed back here and this whole area ends up open. Um, not a huge deal, it looks silly. But for me, the biggest challenge, we live where there's a lot of snow. And if my pants aren't covering up my foot, this just fills up with snow in a heartbeat. Um, not ideal, uh, not good for the foot as the snow melts and the water's in there. You don't want it sitting in water. Um, so for me, that's always been tough. and. A lot of times I've just worn shorts through winter because I wanted to wear this leg. Uh, so if I wasn't going to be outside for a long time, I'd just wear shorts. Um, so with the feet, um, if you are doing this much stuff, I change my feet um, and my legs constantly, depending on what activity I'm doing. Um, not everybody does that and you don't always have to. Um, but the thing to understand is every foot, generally speaking, 
has its strong like strength and a ton of weaknesses. They're almost always designed um, to do one thing well. You don't realize just how dynamic the human foot is and how easily we can go from running to walking to jumping. Um, that's not the same with uh, prosthetic feet. And so I'll show you kind of real quick here. Um, let's see. If you try to do squats, normally your ankle will bend. Oh, you may not be able to see that. Your ankle will bend and your leg comes forward. But with a prosthetic leg, when you go up on your toes, this doesn't bend, it's too stiff. Your heel comes up, that throws your knee forward and it can kind of twist you and it's really, really uncomfortable. Having ankle movement is so huge. And that is where this foot comes in. Because it pivots down here, I'm not gonna be able to probably replicate this without It gives, it's easier when it's on. And so you get the ankle motion and you can bend for squats and that sort of thing. So a lot of people actually work out in these and you can walk in it, but it's not the most comfortable foot to walk in. So you gain some ankle motion, but you lose some comfort. Um, and the guy who makes this, Mike Schultz, is uh, he's actually made a new one that is more advanced and better uh, the shock's a little further back and it's got more movement and flexibility, so it feels a little more natural. Um, I haven't had the chance to try it yet, but I've heard great things about it. Um, so I definitely, if you snowboard a lot, mountain bike a lot, ride dirt bikes, all that kind of stuff, this is a really great foot um, for those kind of sports to get you that ankle motion. And I think it goes without saying, the running foot, like I said, standing around in this gets exhausting because you have to stay up on your toes or you'll fall back. And if you're not careful, you really can fall back. Uh, my prosthetist was telling me that uh, when he fits bilateral amputees uh, with these feet, um, he, you really have to make sure he stays there to catch them because when they first put them on and you're not used to it, um, if you don't have a sound foot and you don't have any heels, that you have a tendency to kind of just fall backwards because you're so used to having a heel on your foot. Um, so, Good for running, not so much for anything else. Um, so I'll talk about uh, my new foot here a little bit, and I'll talk about the whole system in a socket in a future episode. Um, so with my new foot, it's a vacuum, which it's really more of the socket thing for us to talk about uh, in a future episode, but what happens is there's a built-in piece here, so every step I take, it sucks air out of my socket to hold my socket on, and so I don't need a sleeve. I can just go and put it straight on, and it has a button to release. Um, but with this foot, uh, it's kind of like a miniature version. You can see the curve here. So the same concepts, oh, there goes the foot, kind of apply here, just on a smaller scale. But the great thing is this one fits in pants. Um, also, you'll see this kind of rubber ball here. So this is for a little bit of torsion. It gives you a little bit of cushion, but it also, and again, I'm not gonna do it without my body weight, but it twists just ever so much. So when you plant on your foot and turn, um, it gives a little bit so that uh, you don't have to carry that through your knee, which for me happened a lot and my kneecap would hit the sides of my socket and pop every now and then if I twisted too much without relieving the weight on my leg. So there's a lot to feet. Um, it's really difficult to find one that's just right for everything. Uh, you kind of aim to find one that's good middle ground. And two, right out of the gate, it's probably gonna be a while before you can really take advantage of more advanced feet because it takes about 18 months, give or take, uh, to really be comfortable in your socket and be done with all any leg issues and pain and discomfort and that sort of thing. Um, and in the case of like challenged athletes where I got this, they want you to be a year out from amputation before you even apply um, for a grant uh, for something like this because they know at that point it's too early. You're probably, unless you're really, really extreme, probably not gonna get much out of it um, until your leg's more comfortable and really, really recovered uh, and through with the pain. So that's kind of the quick rundown on feet. Um, they vary by uh, weight rating. So depending on how much you weigh, 
Uh, and obviously they come in different foot sizes, so they match your other foot so that when you do wear shoes, um, it'll fit on both feet equally. You don't have to buy two different sizes of shoes. Um, but even then, sometimes with the foot shells, they're not exactly the fanciest things and you gotta shave them down. Um, you can see on this one too, I had to shave it down um, in the early days and it's had its, it's starting to come apart here too. Um, and that's just kind of the way it goes. So that's kind of the quick rundown on shoes, or shoes, on feet. And uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Love to uh, help out. I'll try to uh, link to everything in the comments if you've got questions about where to get these feet or, uh, you know, so you can do some research, ask your prosthetist about them, that kind of thing. Um, and really, that's it for now. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about shoes and how do you make all of this kind of stuff work with shoes. That's it. Thanks for watching. This is Garrett and you got this.